Salutations! This is Really Old News, the channel that brings you the news you're not really dying to know, yet known to those already dead. Today's episode features a villainous plot, an extraordinary pig, an apian funeral, and a smallpox update, so stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Coe's Cough Balsam, a safe and speedy cure for coughs, colds, croup, whooping cough, and all diseases of the throat and lungs. Mammoth family bottles are now offered to the public, giving a much larger quantity of cough medicine than has ever been offered for $1. Our first story today involves a villainous plot. Two weeks ago at Chicago, George Sallermiller was divorced from his wife and next day married a girl of 18. The same day, the divorced wife was married by the same justice to a man of 45. A morning or two since, after having slept 16 hours, Sallermiller awoke to find a sponge saturated with chloroform on the pillow and his wife and $200 missing. The police are after her. Policemen, in the discharge of their duty, often find themselves in awkward situations. Such was eminently the fix of a couple of our city guardians who rode through the streets on Tuesday on a dray in charge of Miss Julia Murren, a lady whom they had arrested on the very unpoetical charge of being drunk and disorderly. A grave policeman on each side and Julia tumbling about promiscuously in the middle, sometimes head and sometimes feet uppermost, made a picture singularly ludicrous. The woman was accompanied by an intelligent-looking boy of nine years, whose case is certainly to be commiserated. Julia said she hailed from Peoria. She was fined $25, which was remitted, however, on condition that she left town by noon next day. In national news, the remains of all the conspirators executed for the assassination of President Lincoln and buried near the remains of Booth in the Arsenal grounds as well as the remains of Booth, have been given up by the president to the friends of the deceased and removed. Those of Booth have been buried near Baltimore, those of Harold in the family burial ground at Washington. Speaking of presidents, John Adams was remarkable as an early riser, as a great smoker, and as a lover of cider. It was common with him to rise at three or four o'clock in the morning and read, smoke, and drink cider for one or two hours before the rest of the family was stirring. When he went out to dine, he was never at ease unless he had with him his own pewter plate to eat from. It was his invariable custom to take the latter with him wherever he went. We would like to extend our gratitude to today's patron, Coe's Cough Balsam, a sure remedy for colds, coughs, croup, influenza, whooping cough, and well-believed consumptive cough. For years, it has been a household medicine, and mothers for the safety of their children and all who suffer from any disease of the throat, chest, and lungs cannot afford to be without it. In addition to the ordinary four ounce so long in the market, they now furnish their mammoth family size bottles, which will, in common with the other size, be found at all drugstores. In local news, the young man lot of Dayton in this county the circumstances of whose being shot by a boy named Martin were detailed in our last, died of his wounds on Saturday evening. Martin, the boy who shot him, has thus far made good his escape. His father, Henry Martin, is under arrest as accessory to the murder of Lot. In happier news, William Dudgeon was the fortunate, or unfortunate, winner of Bowman's Velocipede at the raffle after the exhibition at Turner Hall on Thursday evening. And now the weather. Snow fell at Montreal on Thursday to the depth of 8 feet. The Illinois River is entirely clear of ice and has been for over a week. Boats leave LaSalle now daily for St. Louis, Cairo, Memphis, etc. The weather in Florida in January was so cold as not only to destroy all the fruit trees such as orange, lemon, lime, etc., but killed in large quantities the fish in the streams and bayous. Up next, we have a smallpox update. Letters from California continue to bring fearful accounts of the prevalence of smallpox on the Pacific coast. In San Francisco, the pest houses are full, and funerals are of constant occurrence, the burials in many cases taking place at night. The Chinese, it is stated, have suffered severely, three cases out of five of the patients belonging to this nation terminating fatally. 
Melancholy as the accounts from San Francisco are, the towns in the southern part of California are still great sufferers. Malignant smallpox is attacking almost everyone, and vaccination does not seem to afford any protection. Hospitals have been hastily organized, but no beneficial effects from them have as yet been perceived. Whole families are swept away, and in one instance, a father and four children died within 48 hours. Allow us to present this special notice, Holes Vegetable Sicilian Hair Renewer, which is the only perfected and scientifically prepared preparation of its kind ever offered to the public and has no competitor in merit. By its use, gray hair is soon restored to its original youthful color and brilliancy, which is so much admired by all. Persons whose hair is thin or falling out will, by the use of their renewer, soon see its good effect, as by its tonic and stimulating properties, the hair glands will be incited and the hair grow thick and strong again. Send for their treatise on the hair, free to all, by mail. Sold by all druggists and dealers in medicine. Extraordinary Pig Perhaps one of the largest pigs in England, if not in the world, is now the property of Mr. Lloyd of Breeden, Worcestershire, who purchased it of a neighbor when two months old at 17 shillings, six pennies. This wonderful animal is now 22 months old, measures 9 feet 6 inches from the end of nose to the tip of the tail, 5 feet round the neck, nearly 9 feet round the body, and stands 4 feet high. Funeral of a Bee A gentleman writing from Glasgow relates the following curious incident. On Sunday morning last, I had the pleasure of witnessing a most interesting ceremony, which I desire to record for the benefit of young readers. Whilst walking in the garden near Falkirk, we observed two bees issuing from one of the hives, bearing between them the body of a dead comrade, with which they flew for the distance of ten yards. We followed them closely and noted the care with which they selected a convenient hole at the side of the gravel walk, the tenderness with which they committed the body head downwards to the earth, and the solicitude with which they afterwards pushed against it two little stones, doubtless in memoriam. Their task being ended, they paused for about a minute, perhaps to drop over the grave of their little friend a sympathizing tear, and then they flew away. In Marvel's Closer to Home, Carlo, a Dubuque dog, large and strong, is said to have saved the lives of four persons. He dragged a creeping babe from under the feet of a pawing colt, pulled two drowning girls from Lake Piasta, and gripped his master's coattail one dark and stormy night as he, the master, headed for a stream where the bridge had just been swept away. Carlo has unmuzzled freedom of Dubuque at all seasons. And at last, we come upon our mystery regarding horsehair worms. A writer in the Dublin Farmer's Gazette says that he procured some hairs from the tail of an old mare, roots attached, tied them in a calico bag, and placed it under a stone in a stream. Some weeks after this, he examined the hairs and found, to his surprise, that they had turned into long, wiry red worms. He says he never would have believed it if he had not himself tried the experiment. And that concludes today's episode. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to stay updated on really old news, do consider this your reminder to subscribe. Farewell!